Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the stuff that I do, I'm not sure why the video looks like that, so it's not supposed to. Uh, switch that off. Maybe. Let's see where it is. It comes along, it looks nice in just a second. Nope, there's something wrong with that. Um, anyway, uh, I, uh, I have two different hats that I'm wearing. Uh, I am affiliated with the company Anybody Technology. I'm the CTO of that company. Uh, it's the company that develops this software. That's the hat that I'm wearing on this panel. I will be back later with a different hat, which is my scientific hat as a professor at Aalborg University in Denmark. Um, but right now, I'm representing the company that, that develops these models that you can see here. And uh, you will notice that the models are slightly different from the ones that you have seen earlier. Um, our focus is slightly different from mannequin models in the sense that we try to obtain uh, the maximum amount of anatomical detail and fidelity in the model. Um, so we are really looking into the, the small details of the models, the little muscles and the ligaments and, and stuff that goes on inside the body. Um, so the, the aims that we have with the work that we do is we want to uh, create models that uh, produce realistic motions, uh, realistic forces, and that includes the internal forces. Um, and being able to do that requires that we have a realistic anatomy uh, because the internal forces are mostly generated by the muscles. Uh, the muscle locations are functions of the posture of the body. So having the correct motion will allow us to compute where the muscles are uh, at a certain posture and uh, sorting out the dynamics of the problem will allow us to figure out what the loads of the system are and then we can calculate what the muscle forces are and we can find out what the joint forces are. So all of these things come together and you really can't have uh, one without the other. Um, now the, the focus of what we do at least most of what we do is also slightly different from what you've seen from most of the other presenters in the sense that, that our main focus is actually on orthopedics. Um, so we can do workplace uh, evaluation and we can do posture prediction and all of these uh, different types of things. Uh, but the place where we really add some value is for, for cases where you really need to take the, the detailed anatomy of the human body into account. Uh, then we do software development. Uh, obviously, we develop the software that's capable of doing this. But you have to remember that there's also a different part uh, to this, which is developing the actual models. Uh, the model development is arguably a, a bigger task than the software development, because the amount of detail in, uh, in models like, uh, like the one that you see over here on the right-hand side is so very, very large. Uh, there's a little more than, uh, than a thousand individually activated muscles in this model over here. And just having the, the correct anatomical data for all of those muscles and their attachment points and their fiber lengths and their predation angles and their fiber compositions and uh, lots of different things is an enormous task. So model development is a big thing. Now, um, I mentioned that the current focus areas is, uh, is actually um, to to get input for motion capture systems so that we can get these um, very detailed, anatomically detailed models to do uh, activities of daily living, as you can see here. Um, we're also developing technology that allows us to scale the models automatically based on the motion capture input. Um, you can imagine that if we get uh, motion capture data, uh, then that data will essentially tell us how each segment in the model is moving. And when we know the motion of each segment, we're also able to figure out where the joints are located. And knowing where the joints are located, we're, we're able to scale uh, the, uh, the lengths of the segments to their uh, actual functional lengths and, and determine the functional locations of, uh, of the joints. Um, we're also currently working on a new thing called force-dependent kinematics. Um, that is the, the, the feature that certain parts of our motions not the big ones that you that you see when people are moving with, with your with your eyes, uh, but the smaller things that are going on inside the body um, are actually functions not only of the of the task that we want to perform. So so let's say if I'm if I'm walking, obviously I, I have to move my legs. 
but inside my knee joint there are some micro motions happening which are functions of the forces over the knee joint which again is a function of the muscle forces which again is a function of the, of the task that I'm performing. Uh, so we want to be able to model these little motions as well uh, and we do that in, with a technology called force dependent kinematics. Um, and then finally, we are, we're working right now on an API. It's a, it is actually available and, and functional in its first version. And the reason why we do that strategically is that we want to create a link to what everybody else in the field is doing. So as I just said, we have our own special flavor of stuff that, that we are focusing on, the anatomical detail, the orthopedic applications, and so on. Um, and we have no ambition to do uh, the kind of stuff that Ulrich just showed a moment ago, which is, which is equally complicated to establish. Uh, there's no reason why we would go and replicate that. But it would be very nice if we were able to put some of the capabilities that we have inside models that are good at doing other things. Uh, and that's what we hope to be able to do with this API, uh, which makes this technology available for other types of software <coughs> to uh, basically put a, a, a musculoskeletal model like that one into a standard digital mannequin. Uh, I, I will be talking more about that later. Um, we, uh, we believe that ergonomic problems are affecting the structures inside the body. So if you have a back injury from, from some working task that you're performing, then it's basically because some of the structures inside your spine has been damaged because of the loads that they have sustained. Uh, so this means that ergonomic assessment eventually, when we, when we get smarter and we will know more about it, uh, will involve modeling of the internal structures of the body. And, uh, and therefore we believe that these types of, of detailed models are quite important. Uh, and we also believe therefore that ergonomics and biomechanics will have to come together in, in what you might be able to call a, a product convergence. We have to be able to take um, the, uh, the developments from both sides, from the ergonomic mannequins and from the biomechanical models like these, and we have to be able to put them together and uh, exploit their, their joint capabilities. Uh, I, I will talk more about that in the presentation uh, later today, uh, but this gives you an overview of the focus of the video.